Nellie Letcher grew up in Lake Charles, Charles. Lake Charles, Lake Louisiana. Charles. Good God. Right. Grew up there and left. What age did you leave? Oh, I was about 20. 20 really? That late? Yeah. When I left. I understand you used to play in church and all yes, that. Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, the first money I ever earned, I earned it in the church. Was it really? Yeah. Playing the piano? Yes. Not singing, though? Or was no, it singing? No, 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 no. Singing didn't start until I came to California. It didn't. Tell me about Nellie Letcher. You were in a band also, playing in the bands and yes, stuff? Yes, my dad was a musician, a bass player, and uh, when there came a vacancy in the orchestra for a pianist, right. uh, they asked him if he thought I could handle it, and he said yes, and of course the mother said no. Uh huh. No, no, no. And uh, so, so, as... Was your mother real strict? No, I wouldn't say she was overly strict, but uh, see, coming from the South and Baptist, being in the Baptist church right. and all like that, so they had a different uh, view on what, of course, people would have today mm -hmm. on that type of thing. So she, she oppo was opposed to it, but my father went over. Uh -huh. Right. What was the band you played? What kind of music was uh, it? It was what they called, uh, well, it wasn't really, it was something like Dixieland. Dixieland, I think, yeah. yeah. Right. It was, mm -hmm. Dixieland. Yeah. How long were you with that band? A few years? Or well, what? I was with them for, well, I guess, maybe about five, about five years, four uh -huh. or five years, something like that. How did Nellie that you arrived to California? You came here, and boy, you took this town <laughs> for a storm, Nellie Letcher. Well, At I... The I, Dunbar Hotel... Come yes, on. my first job. First job? Here in my LA. My first job was at the Dunbar, and in Los Angeles was at the Dunbar I Hotel, and I wasn't singing. Playing the piano. I was only playing the piano. You were the only performer ever appeared there. Right on. It was strictly for a black, uh, black hotel for entertainers, like Lena Horn couldn't get a room in, at well, the Beverly Hills Hotel. Yes, Louis Armstrong and many of the great sports, and, you know, they uh -huh. came here, to those people, they couldn't... Was it tough back those days? Well, it really? was a little rough. <laughs> was it? It was a little rough. Tell me about the day you started at the piano in this Dunbar Hotel. Well, when I first came to the Dunbar, uh, I, had a, I had an aunt out here, and uh, my cousin, who was her son, uh, used to frequent this place. Right. So he, uh, he was telling them about his cousin coming to California. So uh -huh. she plays the piano. Uh -huh. So they asked him, well, does she sing? He said, no, she, she doesn't sing, but she plays the piano. Uh -huh. So he said, well, bring her around. So when I came to town, sure enough, he brought me around, uh -huh. and I played for them, and I got the job right away. So it wasn't, an, when I started playing, performing, I was performing right. six nights a week from eight till two, and getting two dollars a night and two dollars a night and two dollars a night and tips and tips. the kitty They'd the put, kitty they would get the glass and sit the glass on the piano so they could put them on uh -huh. but they kept asking me to sing and <laughs> i kept saying i i, I don't sing <laughs> uh. they said well you, you we want to hear you sing we like your voice uh -huh. and we want to hear you sing we love your piano playing we want to uh -huh. and i kept begging you they said well can't you just sing one song so i don't even remember what the song was you don't remember about. I don't remember what the song was, but whatever it was, uh -huh. I did it, uh -huh. and they liked it. They said, well, we want, to, we want you to sing. We want to hear you sing more. So you got more So songs. it started. That started it. So I, I credit the public with uh, making me sing. Nellie, when you play the piano, you have a habit of moving a lot. You just don't even sit down. I mean, tell me about Nellie. Well, I sit. Oh, I, I know you sit, sit. but <laughs> Nellie, tell me about your, your expressions on that piano. Well, I sing. I play what I feel. Is that I how you feel? Play, oh, yes. I, I just, I love the piano, article number one. Right. <coughs> I love it. And <coughs> when, I, when I'm playing, I'm concentrating on every note uh, I play. Uh -huh. Every whatever phrase or whatever you want to call it. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm just concentrating on that one thing. Who are some of the people that used to come to see you after you really got into that hotel, the Dunbar, like... Well, uh, really... Because you made a name there, and you really... Well, I, I made... Well, I was, as I say, I was there just about six weeks, I suppose. Uh -huh. that's, that, that's as long as they ran the entertainment. Right. So though they cut it out after that, because they found out they didn't even have to have it after uh -huh. I left. Because they had, you know, people would just come there anyway. You got Louis Armstrong, and yeah. all the big stars. All the big, and, and the, the, the great uh, fighters, the sports people would Sport come people. there. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it was a, quite a spot in town uh -huh. for the people in show business and people that like that kind of life. Uh huh. Nellie, but from there, you, you recorded a song. 
Well, how did Capitol Records, what happened? How did Capitol Records get a hold of well, Nellie Letcher? I mean, come <laughs> on, Nellie. Well, I tell you what, after, after 12 years, because it was, I was here 12 years before this happened. Right. But I was at the uh, March of Dimes benefit show. Right. And uh, how I got that, my little son was in school uh -huh. in the neighborhood, and the teacher said, tell your parents about the March of Dimes show and ask all of them to, to come to the Hollywood uh, High School and bring some money. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, I said, uh, he told me about it, and then I, I, uh, he said, Mama, why don't you perform? Because they were talking about people performing, and one of the performers uh -huh. that was performing then, and the biggest all outdoors, was Bob Hope. Bob Hope was the only performer, yeah. the biggest. He was one of the biggest. Right. And uh, anyway, I said, well, he said, Mama, why, why, can't, why aren't you going to perform uh -huh. on the show? I said, well, they don't know anything about me. Uh -huh. He said, Yes, but Mama, you are good as they are. I said, that isn't it. They just don't know me. Uh -huh. They know the people that are well known or the people that's going to be on the show. So, mm -hmm. so he said, well, I sure wish you would, I wish you would try to get, get on that show. I'd like to see you. They were naming the people. Uh -huh. That's what made him say this. Uh -huh. Frank Bull, who was a great sportsman here in California, right. was the one announcing it on his show. And he would tell who was going to be the on the show. Uh -huh. So my son said, well, <laughs> he said, Mama, I sure would, and then he, and my aunt, who's my son's great aunt, mm -hmm. said, I think it would be wonderful if you would uh, maybe call the station, uh, write, uh, send them a telegram and uh -huh. tell them that you'd like to appear on the show. Uh -huh. That would make your son happy. I said, well, I think I will. So I sh did send a telegram, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and Frank Bell got the telegram and read it. And he I said, here's some gal named Nellie Lucher. Nellie Lucher? <laughs> Go ahead. He said, some gal named Nellie Lucher, and she wants to be on our show. He said, well, I don't know Nellie Lucher. I never heard of her. Uh -huh. And uh, he said, but uh, I think that's nice of her to, uh, to want to appear on our show and help us, because uh -huh. we're trying to raise some money for the cause. Right. And uh, so he said, well, we'd love to have her come, so uh, uh -huh. we'll put her name down. So they did. It started from there. So sure enough, uh -huh. As the show went on, mm -hmm. it was scheduled that each person, each jockey, this jockey, right. would do one hour. And as it, when it came his time, Frank Bull's time, right. he was the guy that introduced me. Right. And he said to me, he said, now, uh, uh, we're not going to have time to, to do but one song. And he said, what, what do you want to do? He said, uh, the program is running long. Right. So I did the song, uh, the one I love belongs to somebody else. That uh -huh. was the song I did. And it all started from that, and it so happened that Dave Dexter, who was the it's Capitol big, Records, oh yes, Capitol Records, yeah, was a big guy, big guy, Capitol Records, and he was home. Mm -hmm. His wife was expecting a child at the time, right? And they were listening to the program, and it started from there. Nellie Letcher, you're sitting there telling me that your son pushed you into this. Yeah, he, you're, yeah. you know something, your son is responsible for <laughs> uh -huh. Nellie Letcher, well, for the is. public to know about Nellie Letcher. Uh, yeah, if it yeah. wasn't for your son. Who knows well, what happened, huh, Well, Nellie? that's true. That's it's true. just the truth. If, yeah, See? that's true. Capitol Records signed you up. First song. What was the big hit? The big hit was uh, Hurry On Down. Hurry On Down, honey. I love that song. How did that start? Excuse me a little. Hurry On Down to my husband. There ain't anybody on but me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big seller. Good. Well, it was, it was my first record. It, it was my first record session, really. Uh-huh. And my first record. Hurry on down. Hurry on down. And uh, and on the other side was the ladies in love with you, which was a wonderful Frank Lesser tune, uh -huh. you know. And uh, Barney Josephson, of course, played a great part in that. Uh -huh. In that he and Frank Lesser were very very good friends. Uh -huh. So when he heard the record, the record was released in New York first. Right. And when he heard the record in New York, he, uh, he said. I, well, I I I gotta get this gal to come to Cal to come uh -huh. to New York. Uh -huh. So. Uh, he got busy and he found out that Dave Dexter was the guy responsible, right. you know, for me right. getting on Capitol. Uh -huh. So it all started from that, and so sure enough, I, I played New York that fall for the first time. Yeah, exciting. Bonnie Joseph and at Cafe Society. Cafe was, Society. That was it. That was the. How did Nellie Tree uh, got accepted in Cafe Society? I mean, oh, the greatest people oh, in the listen, audience. I'll never forget it. You, tell it, was, me. it was it was absolutely something way beyond anything I expected. Any recognition. Right. I, I just didn't. I, Who were in the audience uh, at, at the Cafe Society for seeing Nellie Letcher? Come on, Nellie. Well, the record, the, the record had been, had been uh, promoted highly uh -huh. for about, well, say about five or six months before I got there, see. Right. 
And of course, that doesn't happen too much today. You know, when a record what comes. What do you mean by that? Well, it's not the promotion. They don't promotion isn't that long. That no, long. no. Yeah. It, isn't, it doesn't take that long. They got too many other people. Right, right. The competition is so great now. Right. But at that particular time, there weren't that many yeah. artists as they are today. Okay. See, so. Don't we to have too many today? Come on, no, Nellie. I don't think there are too many. I uh, no, no, and I don't. I don't think there are too many. It was variety, as they say, is the spice of life. Uh -huh. But there are so many different styles that have come about since. Right. Since. Uh, okay, let's get back to so Cafe Society and the audiences. Who are some of the night? audience? Oh, that night. Uh, um, I, I'm right, right now. I can't yeah, that's okay. But there were notables. There were uh, people from even Los Angeles because this was about the same time that the, uh, uh, the ball game came on, what uh -huh. you, you know, the annual ball game, I can't even think of it. That the pennants and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I, uh, they were there for that. Leon Rene, who is deceased now, he was a big uh -huh. songwriter, and uh, oh, so many other people, I, couldn't, I can't even think. Favorite club in New York, The Village? The village it was in the village. It no, was in the, the village. Cafe Society cafe was in, society the village. in the village. But Greenwich the other, Village. The Greenwich Village. But the other one you did in the village. What was the other one? You worked the village a lot, didn't you? The village. This is the only this club the in the only village. This is the only one you did it's in, the in the village. Now later in later village years. Village Vanguard. Did but you I do? never worked there. You but never it, worked it, at Venture? No, no. It was right. right across from Cafe Society. Cafe Society. Mm -hmm. I later, I worked the uh, the same gentleman, Barney Josephson, opened the cookery. But well, that's in a different section. That wasn't uh -huh. in the village. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But the only place I worked in the village was the uh, Cafe Society. Nellie, when your song came out, I mean, when they heard it first, I mean, it was a very unusual, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, Nellie let you, <laughs> you know, and I heard it. I just, I, what, what is that lady doing? Were you in New York at the time? Yeah. You were in New York. I was in New York. I just heard that lady singing. I couldn't believe what that voice was. It was so, <laughs> what was the second song? Big hit. Uh, the second, second big hit. You mean big, the second big, hit? Big hit. The second hit was He's a Real Gone, gone guy. guy. And that really stuck with you, though. Yes. That stuck with you. He's a Real Gone Guy. Everyone yes. loves that song. That was my second, uh, it was my second record, uh -huh. second release, and it was a hit. So fortunately, I had two hits in a row, uh -huh. and they were both originals. Princes Die in, in London, England. Princes Die has parties. And I understand she plays all your songs, and they they dance to it, and they sing to it. That fine uh, brown uh, fine brown frame. Thing. They de they love that song. Prin that's Princess Di's favorite song. Well, I, I heard. That. Did you hear that? Yeah, I, well, I, I heard, heard this. That. This they all dance to your music I and heard. sing and carry on. How do you feel about that? Well, I'm thrilled. I'm I'm absolutely thrilled to hear that. Uh huh. And, and you're a big hit in England. You work England a lot, do you? Well, I was there twice in one year. Twice in one year yes, is good. Twice in one year, <laughs> uh -huh. and uh, I, I was just absolutely elated over the response uh -huh. because I didn't have any idea that they were that familiar with my with my work. And not only that, you're, you're sitting there telling me you're not. They're familiar with you in Australia. Even when I was in Sydney, Australia, I was working there. What 1971? Not only that, I heard your records all over the place. You you work Australia. Don't I you? haven't. No, I haven't worked. You haven't worked yet. Australia. No. Alan Eicher has not put you to Australia yet. <laughs> Good no, but there's an album. There was an album out that uh, it was uh, uh, right. released in, in Australia. In Australia. They love you there, because mm -hmm. I was there. I remember hearing your music. Tell me about the Roosevelt Hotel. You're going to open at the Roosevelt, the Center Grill. Yes. Nellie Letcher, you work there a lot. This I have worked like there several times. Oh, I guess seven or eight times. Eight times, really? It's a lovely room. I love it. Uh -huh. It's in the, right in the heart of Hollywood. Hollywood, not downtown <laughs> Hollywood, okay. That Cine Grill is, uh, it's an old, old uh, spot. Uh -huh. Because they tell me that before I suppose I came to California, that uh, this is where all of the stars and, and the, the cabinet, first the cabinet ward was. Yes, in, that, in that's that right. Yes, right. That's right. So it, it's a landmark, really. And it's a lovely hotel. And I have had the pleasure of working there, uh -huh. as I say, several times. So I am going in next Tuesday. Next which Tuesday? Is October 6th. You'll be there for how many days? Uh, for five days. Five days. And Nellie Letcher is going to be back in town for five days. <laughs> the real gone gals coming back, right? I love it, Nellie. Yeah. What kind of songs you're going to be doing? You'll be doing all your old songs? I'm going to do some of the old songs. This, this is what the people know because I have not uh, recorded anything recently. Of course. And they know the old song. They know the things. And they ask, they're ask. they still asking for them, and they want to hear them. So uh -huh. I, I have an awful lot of tunes, that, uh, records that have never been really released. Last time you were at the Cine Girl, I heard that Nellie Tomlin comes 
Yes, I hear was, that Elton John comes. Elton John. Tell me. That was, that was a wonderful experience. Uh, Elton John was brought, by, brought there by friends. Right. And uh, he did not know that, because uh, I think he probably had just come to town, right. and he did not know that I was there. He didn't know that you were He did not know. Right. And so they, they brought him there and surprised and when he got there and they brought him in and he found out of himself. Well, it was, it was absolutely just the most magnificent, uh, wonderful experience. I and so when he uh, got a chance to, when I got it, they told me he was there and I introduced him. Right. And he came up to the bandstand and, uh, and he had to say on the microphone that I, he was, uh, I impressed him with, with my work. He heard my right. records. Uh -huh. When he was just a kid, right, was, and he said uh, his parents had my records, and he loved the records, so he got. That's how he that was inspired him yeah. to do to what it. he's doing today. Really, that's what he. Now he let you inspired this young man, but yeah. I heard he got it and sang too. He sang a song and dedicated it to me. Oh no! And I, I, I let him. He played and sang. Give him the stage, huh? Yes, that was great it was now. wonderful. You I sit there. You play the piano and sit and play, just like uh, Elton John does. Yeah. Same thing. Mm-hmm. But you still boo that movement, don't <laughs> Al? You still got. I understand you're going to celebrate it's your 80th birthday, 80 years old, Nellie. Come right. on, I'm That's looking right. at you. That's right. What is your secret? Well, come on, girl. <laughs> tell me your secret, girl. Well, I, I, I don't <laughs> yeah. know. Well, I just say, just think, try to think right, try to keep your mind, you know, in the right place. That's all I can say, and uh, do a few other little things that helps. Like eating right or try to or something similar. What has been the biggest lesson for Nellie Letcher in life? What well, to, to do unto others as you would have them do unto me. Mm -hmm. That's my, one of my big things that I try to remember and try to practice. Have you ever turned it down? It hasn't always worked that it way, hasn't? though. No. <laughs> have you ever it turned down a club that you didn't want to work sometime, Nellie? Well, not necessarily, no, not turned it down. Maybe there was some reason why I wouldn't work it. Uh -huh. you know, but uh, I, I, I didn't work it because of uh, maybe the manager of some, for some, some reason, but no. I, I just, because I love doing what I do. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it. And in recent years, of course, I haven't been as, as active as I uh -huh. was at one time because uh -huh. the whole trend in music has changed. It has, and hasn't it? Yeah, oh, yes, indeed. There's so many new artists and young artists coming up on stage, so, you know. Does Nellie Letcher believe in fate? Uh, somewhat, yes. I see you're spiritual. I'm sitting here talking to you right now. I feel, I feel, I know you're spiritual, but I have a feeling uh, that you, in your life, and traveling all over the world, you have met all kinds of people. I have. I what was your greatest, what is your greatest achievement? Do you have a greatest achievement? Here? Well, my greatest achievement was to be recognized. To be recognized? Yes. Uh, when, when I made records, and when I, the way I started, you know, in, in the business, right. as a musician, and I had a, I might go back to that and say I had the most wonderful teacher uh -huh. uh, that took interest in me when I, when I first showed interest in the piano, uh -huh. and my parents recognized this. And uh, my mother was especially proud and thrilled uh -huh. because she wanted to play the piano when she was a girl. Oh. Well, at that time, um, people used to marry very, very young. Of course, they're doing it now. Well, they they, they used to get married at 15, 14, well, 13 uh, right in, on. in Louisiana, and Mississippi, and Arkansas, right? And my mother was, was very, very young when she married. Really? And she didn't have a chance, really, to play the piano, but that was her desire, her heart's mm -hmm. desire. So. Yeah, I, when I came along and showed interest, and I was just a toddler, and she said I'd go up to the piano and just, uh, uh -huh. every day I would do it, and go uh -huh. to the piano and play on the piano, and she was so thrilled. What's been the hardest for Nellie Letcher in life? Well, the hardest thing in life, one of the hardest things, is really to uh, reckon in some instances, of course, like most people, I'm not the only one that has experienced certain things and like coming along at the time when I came, for instance, from the South. That you grew up with many, fa uh, how many in the family? Well, there were 15. 15 uh, not, children? No, not 15 living, but my mother was a mother of 15. 15. So there were about 10 of us living. Uh-huh. There were about six or seven of us left now. Uh -huh. We just lost a sister this year. Uh-huh. And, uh, but the hardest thing 
was to get to do what you want, the things that you wanted to do, and make money, you know, make it profitable. Nellie Letcher, you're still working today, 80 years old. Yeah. Listen, you, you, 80 years old, playing the piano, mm -hmm. two in the morning. Hey. I'm Look, grateful. you drive your own car. I'm looking at you. I'm, I'm looking grateful at for, I'm grateful for it. I have news for you. I is it all most, up here in the mind? Most of it is in the mind, yes, it is. Uh -huh. uh, because if you sit and feel sorry for yourself when things go bad, uh, uh, you know, when they're uh, all adverse situations, <coughs> shame on you. Louis Armstrong, come on, tell me oh, about Louis. Oh, he was so great. Tell me about Louis. Oh, he was just wonderful. He was a wonderful artist, wonderful man. When I hear his songs today, yes. I get a lift. I really do. Does it? Yes. Makes you... Uh, I, get a, I get a lift because he was a man who sang strictly from the heart. Uh -huh. Strictly from the heart and played the trumpet strictly from the heart. What's your happiest memory? Nellie Letcher? Well, <coughs> do you have I one? I think, uh, let me say, as I, I, I'm going back to what I said previously. Right. Uh, one of my happiest moments was when I got recognition. Right. When you have done something and tried to prepare yourself for something, mm -hmm. and uh, somebody comes along and recognizes you for what you've done. To me, that's it. That's it. Uh -huh. That means that you have. You, you, you have reached a certain goal. Nellie, do you advise young people when you see a pianist or in a bar? Or, uh, do you give advice sometimes to these young people? Is there, do they, they ever come up to you, Nellie Letcher, and say, you know, give me some ideas? If they do, I'm happy to talk to them. You do? I'm very happy. But uh, uh, strangely enough, in this day and time, they, there are not that many kids uh, seemingly concerned, and particularly with the piano. Right. You know, there have been so many different uh, things that come along to look like try to push the piano right. aside. Uh -huh. And the piano is really the foundation of, of all music. The piano of is, the, isn't it? It is the foundation of music. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But uh, if I can help them, if I can encourage them, right. and when they come up and say, you know, I, I like Elton John. Right. When he told me that I was his inspiration, well, that really made me very happy, uh -huh. made me very happy. Now you'll be opening at the Roosevelt Hotel um, next week. Tuesday, oh, Tuesday, five days. Five days. From the Tuesday through the Is 10th. it two shows, one show a night one, or what? Well, it's one show Tuesday, one show Wednesday, one show Thursday, and two shows Friday. Now we let you play two, two shows, shows Friday and Saturday. <laughs> I can't believe you. Yeah, there'll be two shows on the weekend <laughs> and one during the week. What kind of a day do you do, Nellie, when you, uh, when you work at night? What's, would you sleep all day, rest, or well, what? Well, I is rest. I have news for you. I get my rest. I do mm. that. Because you work clubs all your life, mm -hmm. traveled all of your life. Right. So you do sleep late. Yes. You, see, that's, that's the secret. You take well, naps in the afternoon. Yeah. But, but when, what, funny, when I'm not working, I don't do that. I'm, I'm, I'm engaged in other things. Well, nothing... Uh, uh, real spectacular, but I'm just busy doing something, and I'm trying to use uh -huh. my mind all the uh -huh. time. Because uh -huh. there are so many people today that I know, uh -huh. unfortunately, who are not able to say that. I and saw you working. Sad. I saw you working. I think in Germany. I can't remember. Was it Germany? You entered. No. Did you never work Germany at no. the military shows and bases? Did no. you ever do the bases? No. Never did the bases. No. no. How come mm -hmm. you never did those bases? Well, I, at the time... All the stars used to go to officers, NCO clubs, EM clubs. They, yeah. They were waiting for you. Well, I, I tell you, uh, for instance, here in Los Angeles, I worked on one job for about three years. I would get on a job and just stay, you know. Right, right. I'd, I'd build up a clientele, and that was one thing in my favor. When, <coughs> when I uh, became a recording artist, you know, uh -huh. a lot of people remembered that. They remembered me. Like the song you mentioned, Fine Brown Frame, Fine Brown was a song Frame. that I was doing long before I thought about making a record. Was that really? Yeah. You did it before? Yeah. Oh, yes, I was doing it. This is one of the songs that the girl says, hey, Nellie, sing a song for us. Is this one of the numbers, yes. Nellie? That's is one it? of the songs. Was it really? And That's you decided to songs. make the record in. So I, when, when, when I got a chance to record, I, was, I wrote, you know, I was writing things right. for the, for, to record. Now, Real Gone Guy was my second hit right. record, and uh, when that record came out, right. well, I was very surprised, very thrilled uh -huh. to know that I had two big records going, and then Fine Brown Frame came out, was, I recorded that later, mm -hmm. and it came out, and 
immediately, before it was even recorded, it was a hit. Now, you just got an award. Come on, tell me the award you just got for this wonderful... Uh, from the Rhythm and Blues. Rhythm and Blues. Come on, Nellie. Uh, foundation. Uh, this organization is uh, located in Washington, D.C. Right. And a very wonderful young woman uh, named Susan Jenkins is the uh, executive producer. Right. Uh, uh, not producer, executive, I should say. Right. Of this organization. And what they do is uh, they go back in history and they trace your your roots <laughs> uh -huh. and uh, find out where you started, how you started, and uh, what you have done, uh -huh. what you have done and produced, uh -huh. and uh, then they they honor you for that. Right. You know, after it's the old pioneers. Is yeah, the, the pioneers. Old pioneers. That's, that's, that's what right. It's called. So I was right. this year. I happen to have been selected as one of their pioneers. That's and great. And I'm very happy. That's I was very thrilled over it. And they so that's one of your happiest memories, isn't it? Yeah. But was I, it was, was a happy. It memory. was a happy memory because I also got a nice. They gave grants. They give uh -huh. grants. Yes. And that's a that's a wonderful, wonderful uh -huh. thing uh -huh. because there are many people in this business who did not have the fo good fortune that I had to really, you know, to get to be known and get to, to get the recognition. They Nellie just Letcher. didn't get it. Nellie Letcher, looking back over this wonderful life of yours, sad moments, happy moments. Uh, would you do it again the same way? I wonder. <laughs> I, I think I would. I, I really think I, I would. You've, so you're sitting there telling me Nellie Letcher had a good time, right? Yeah, well, I, I'll say I had a happy time. Let's say happy. happy. I said I was happy. Uh -huh. In the first place, I had wonderful parents. I had right. a beautiful mother and father. Uh -huh.